Well guys, this is it. My 300th video review on YouTube. As a special reward for sticking with me, it's Grail time. This is the video review for Yamato's 1-3000 scale SDF-1 Macross from... Macross. Well, more specifically, the movie adaptation of the TV show Macross, Do You Remember Love? Because the design of the ship is a little bit different in the movie versus a TV show. Either way, I am very pleased with this thing. Now, I do want to say up front, without having seen the TV show, you can't really appreciate what this thing is. I'll try to explain, to the best of my ability, why the things about this ship that are important are important, and why it is the way it is, but everything about this is designed a specific way for a specific reason. The story of the show very much revolves around the design of this ship, and the robot mode this thing has isn't quite a robot mode. This thing is a spaceship. It always will be a spaceship. And it just, by coincidence, ends up having a mode that looks like a human. Basically what happens is these shoulder bits are opposable docking ports and these are giant spaceships docked to it. Otherwise it would only passingly look like a humanoid. And so this is the ship mode and it is it's very, very detailed. I love the just massive amount of detail, and it's this thing is amazing. It looks just like it did in the movie, and pretty close to what it did in the TV show. It comes with this nice stand, and, well, if you don't want to use a stand, unfortunately, if you just put it on the ground, it will sag down, but you can stand it up on the, in quote, feet. Now, one of the details about this thing that I absolutely love is, you see this side panel here? You can pull it off, and in here is a city. And, yes, this ship did host a city inside of it in the TV show. And I'm really happy they put that detail in there. And it just makes the thing that much more complete. Because that the city is a huge part of the story. Without the city... Earth would have been destroyed. Well, it was destroyed, but mankind would have been annihilated. Let's put it that way. And the main uh, gimmick of this mode in the TV show and otherwise is if you pop these up, they're in very tightly, but pop them up and then split the front and then rotate these around you access what is known as the Macross Cannon. Now, unfortunately, this will start to move a little bit. That's why the stand's there, but... Essentially, this is a giant railgun, and it destroys everything. This is the main weapon of the ship, and this is actually the reason why it transforms. What happens is that in the show, this main gun gets d uh, severely damaged and they have this ship has a modular design and the hint that has more configurations than are what are shown in the show but essentially what happens is it needs to re reconfigure itself so that this gun can access some redundant systems so that it can still fire and uh now that we have this open let's start with the transformation what we'll do is we'll take the arms that's what these giant ships are called rotate them forward one click down one click up, or two clicks up, and that will allow us to bring the arm down without risking bending these bits. These are um, also tiny guns. Now one thing I want you to pay attention to is, in the shoulder, you can see a little bar right there. As you move the shoulder down, that bar will retract. That bar is what keeps the uh, shoulder bits in place in ship mode, which prevents these from sagging. It's really nice. We will do the same on the other side. Rotate out, down, rotate this bit down, and next what we have to do is you see these little um, tabs right here in the shoulders? We don't want to just fold them down, we want to pull them out and down. Let's see, let me get my light in here a little bit better. We're going to pull it 
out and down. And that's the arms basically transformed. Now what we need to do is, here we have uh, this chest bit here. We need to pull it out like this. And then we need to telescope up the chest and start continuing to rotate this around. But one thing we need to do is there's a little, uh, oh yes, push this in. There's a little tab back here, right here. You need to pull this out. You need a fingernail to do it and that will release this section here. And then we can continue rotating this chest bit around. It's a lot harder doing this on camera than in person, but rotate that bit around. And then this uh, chest area will still telescope up and down, so you need to push this locking bit back in, and that will solidify the entire chest. And, uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take the bridge, and we're going to fold it down. Now when you fold it down, what happens is there's a tiny thruster back here, and as you fold it down, it will collapse into behind the head, and it'll also cover that clip, which is quite nice. And now we are most of the way done. All we have to do is um, deal with the Macross Cannon a bit more. What we do is we pull each of the pontoons out, and then fold them back. like that, and then get it all nice and posed, give it its A-stance, the A-stance, bend the arms, position the rail guns, and this guy is giant and complete. This thing is amazing. And you see how it looks like a humanoid? If you didn't have the arms on, it would still look kind of humanoid, but not to the same degree. This thing is still a spaceship. One uh, way you can tell is that at the back, you have thrusters here. Now these are quite a bit weaker than the thrusters uh, back here. But the thing is, the bridge is facing this way. Now granted, if they're actually trying to get somewhere fast in this mode, I'm sure they could fly like Superman, but that doesn't appear in the show. I wish it did, because one of the things that happens in the show is that it flies along just like... And that's a bit slower, because you don't have access to these giant engines. Now, one thing that is very interesting is that, while on the macro scale, the transformation for this is fairly simple, but on the um, micro scale... The transformation is very complex, because in the show, well, you saw how Macross City was in a leg here. In the show, what happens is that when they reconfigure it, lots and lots and lots of systems change around. Like, everything inside of the uh, chest and legs and stuff, they all move. So Macross City gets destroyed several times by this thing transforming until they figure out where all the transformation seams are and design the city around it. And even then, it still gets damaged. In fact, there's an episode where a couple characters get trapped until the transformation is undone. And so yes, it's, it's a very interesting design. How clever it is and how much uh, detail goes into how this thing functions as far as in the TV show and how faithfully it's replicated really, really impresses me. And then the size. And now, one thing that happens is that the Macross cannon can fire like this, just straight up. They can also fire forward. So what will happen is these pontoons will come forward. But before you do that, you have to do something uh, to make sure they don't sag. Because these things are too heavy for the uh, strength of the joints in here. There's this little bit right here. You need to take your fingernail and pull it out. It's very hard to do. But you need to do this on each side. You need to pull this out. This is a little supporting strut. Do that on each side. And then what you will do is, there are buttons on the back. You don't need to press the button to raise them, but you need to press the button to get them to go forward. And then they will go all the way forward, and then you need to press them back down. 
And what will happen is that little, well, if it doesn't come undone, is once you get all the way forward, which can actually be a bit of a pain, but once you get it all the way forward and locked into place, once you get all the way forward and locked into place, well, it's not cooperating, that little tab keeps bending, but once you get it forward and locked into place, you see how that tab uh, rests under it. That tab keeps the uh, pontoon straight. So do the same to the other side, press the button, make it go forward, locked into place, and press it down. There, that, that was a lot easier. And then here, it can fire straight. Now one thing they, they did is they gave it knee joints, although it really doesn't need them because it doesn't walk, but they gave it knee joints so that you could uh, change its posture so that it's bending back a little bit while these are out, because otherwise it is a bit front heavy. So now I might as well address posability. That's not really a concern for this thing because, I mean, it's just a giant spaceship. Why does it need to pose? But you can move the legs in and out one click and that's more of a style thing because just straight up and down it does look a little bit dorky but out to the side it looks very dynamic which is what they were going for in the show and then you do get a little bit of motion here in the knees just so you can counterbalance the weight of these things and then you can uh, pose these around and then the arms the arms are quite posable I do like them they rotate around 360 they go in and out, they rotate above the elbow, they can rotate back and, rotate back and forth at the elbow, and then they, the um, giant ships themselves can rotate. So, while they're not hands and they don't have the same expressive power as hands, you do get quite a bit of possibility out of the arms. And yeah, this thing is just really nice. Now, I do have a couple complaints about this thing, and these are... Uh, kind of unfortunate. The first complaint is that the arms, the way they clip on, is kind of permanent. When this thing, when you open this thing, these ships right here aren't attached. They're basically their own little toys. And but the way they attach, um, it's like here is the. Um, it it kind of goes in like this, but then there are. It goes in kind of like this, and I feel like if you take them apart, they'll weaken over time. So. They're kind of permanently attached, although they do have a rare earth magnet that helps keep them on. So that is nice. This thing actually has quite a few magnets in it that help keep it all together. So I feel like if these could come off and you could just wish them around as their own little spaceships, that would be really nice. And just being able to take these off without fear of damaging the thing, which would be quite easy because to design because they already slide back and forth. Just make it so that they slide out and then there's just a cap you put on and off. Doing that would have really improved this figure because then you could store it in the box. As it is, once you attach these, you can't really put it back into the box, which is a shame because I would really like to be able to put it back into the box so they will have that protection. Now granted, it is a very durable toy. I don't think it's going to break anytime soon. The only things that might break are these rail guns back here and the antenna on the very tiny bridge. Oh, which is completely overshadowed by the Macross cannon. But yeah, that bridge is tiny and the antenna are t on it are tiny. Those are the only things I think might, well, and these little bits here on the edge of the cannon. Those are the only things that I really think might break. Otherwise, it's a very sturdy toy, so it's not that big of a deal that you can't restore it. It just, it would have been nice. <laughs> And yeah, this is the Macross. It's a very nice figure. I adore this thing, and like I said, this is a grail. This is a grail for me. I have wanted this thing for a long time. I mean, ever since I watched Macross, I've wanted a good toy of the Macross. And then for such an amazing figure to be released, I am just super, super happy. And yes, this thing is giant, so I realize some of the shots of this thing were kind of bad, but hmm, what can you do? It's a giant figure. 
I review Macross figures, I review Transformers, I review Power Rangers stuff, I, I've reviewed some Brave things, I review Marvel figures. If you like any of that stuff, please subscribe. Thank you for watching.